there are poets that you could conceivably label nature poets, but I like to avoid that label because I think it tends to pigeonhole people into um, into a smaller scope that is unfair to their work. I work have worked for probably 20 years publishing environmental books, nonfiction books, some literary books that have to do with landscape, the environment, and nature. And so while I confess that I'm not the most outdoorsy person on the planet, I do feel this predisposition to pay attention to nature. And there was something about being at Lake Titicaca that just got under my skin. I had no idea that being there would be such a profound experience. The lake itself is just a, this majestic jewel of water. Jewel is probably the wrong word because it's not a small body of water. It is massive. You're up there at an altitude of something like 12,000 feet, and so you feel as though you can almost touch the sky, and I was really taken with the experience, not just of grandeur, which was certainly a big part of it, but also the cultures there are so close to what they've been for hundreds of years. There was all of this going on and it captivated me and the poems just started coming out and I was really surprised because while I write poems about place a lot, I've never written quite so many in quite such a concentration of focus. Lake Titicaca section represents you know this kind of outburst of feelings about a place and is a self-contained unit which is unusual although i've had written series before the series have been more various and then the last section is more moving towards the light and although there are some poems in the last section that stay in in a more melancholy or darker mood there are also some poems that find joy in the dailiness of life and celebrate love and celebrate the small miracles that really can uplift your spirit the title washing the elephant comes from two opposing images in one case i saw in a film a hauntingly beautiful film two young boys washing a water buffalo in a river and it was such a sacred intimate ritualistic experience that it really stuck with me and then opposed to that is the fact that the circus walks its elephants into the garden to bring them to this place they perform and that seemed like a much more profane and graceful experience so those two poles those two images set up the field in which the poem took its energy, washing the elephant. Isn't it always the heart that wants to wash the elephant, begging the body to do it with soap and water, a ladder, hands, in triche big enough for the vast savannas of your sadness, the strangler fig of your guilt, the cratered full moon's light fueling the windy, spooling memory of elephant. What if Father Quinn had said, of course you'll recognize your parents in heaven, instead of being one with God will make your mother and father pointless. That was back when I was young enough to love them absolutely, though still fear for their place in heaven, imagining their souls like sponges full of something resembling street water after rain. Still, my mother sent me every Saturday to confess, to wring the sins out of my small, baffled soul, and I made up lies about lying, disobeying, chewing gum in church, to offer them as carefully as I handed over the knotted handkerchief of coins to the grocer when my mother sent me for a loaf of wonder, land of lakes, and two camels. If guilt is the damage of childhood, then Eros is the fall of adolescence, or the fall begins there and never ends, desire after desire, parading through a lifetime like the wrangling brother's elephants made 
to walk through the Queens Midtown Tunnel and down 34th Street to the garden. So much of our desire, like their bulky, shadowy walking after midnight, exiled from the wild and destined for a circus with its tawdry gaudiness, its unspoken pathos. It takes more than half a century to figure out who they were, the few real loves of your life, and how much of the rest, the mad breaking heart stickiness, falls away slowly, unnoticed, the way you lose your taste for things, like popsicles, unthinkingly. And though dailiness may have no place for the ones that have etched themselves in the laugh lines and frown lines on the face, it's harder and harder to claim as your own. Often, one love of your life will appear in a dream, arriving with the weight and certitude of an elephant. And it's always the heart that wants to go out and wash the huge mysteriousness of what they meant, those memories that have only memories to feed them and only you to keep them clean.